Welcome to session three of Blood, Sweat, and Tears, a dark fantasy and mud fantasy open world or sandbox adventure using a modified version of the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons rules. I will now introduce the party. Uh, I'm Kevin, I'm playing Close. I'm Jay, and I'm playing Angus McLeod. I'm Ian, and I'm playing uh, Junaluska. And I am the dungeon master for this game, Morgan. You're going to be hearing my voice a lot, which is lucky for you. It sounds so good. Last session, our band of adventurers left the town of Sigurdsgruft. It's probably the first time that Klaus has left this town. Maybe not. Probably not. Probably not. Probably haven't gone too far. Yeah. All right. Uh, In that case, not the first time. Certainly, Jack and Angus are more experienced the road. You've seen some of the towns north of uh, Sigurdsgruft before, and are uh, used to them to an extent. But they've traveled north through Hohenfeld, to the town of Deckendorf, where they ran into a new and also old friend and also enemy in the form of a blonde-haired horsewoman who accosted them and has since ridden off. Now the big news in Deckendorf is a refugee camp on the outskirts of town, packed with the survivors from the Siege of Hohenhoff and also the general war in the north, who have been surrounded by the local militia. More of the heroes do not know. They will have to investigate themselves. So we're all together now. You guys are back at the cart. Uh, making our way out, yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So we're left with uh, that lady friend there. I talked at her for a while. We played, uh, can you draw a map? Neither of us can. It's a successful meeting. Uh, and she only threatened to stab me once. So, uh, you know. Well, same for me. Uh, you got so. stabbed by a horse? <laughs> no, she threatened to stab me on her way out as oh, well. okay. So we're equal on that front. Mm. I was never threatened to be stabbed. No, no, no. The day is still young. And besides, those, mer- <laughs> those people look like they're going to stab a lot of refugees in the not too distant future. Mm. Yes, I was thinking about that. You know, as uh, you know, we're looking for work and uh, stabbing refugees and pushing them out of town. That's a complicated and dirty business. What if we maybe talk to the Lord and convince him that we could deal with the problem without violence? Maybe push them to the river on the edge of the barony, help them out with hunting, supplying them, and in return they pay a small fee. And then, you know, if they still are a problem and need to be removed, it's out of sight and out of, you know, nobody knows. That would be interesting, especially since the river is on the other side of town. Uh, just further away from the town, help supply them in return for a little bit of money, then you don't have to worry about them stealing. I think it uh, could potentially work. Potentially. We'd have to bring in a lot of supplies. Exactly. Volume is how you make money in this business. I'm going to look at the one cart we have and just kind of look at it. Uh, I can stack real high. (laughs) And then look at your small stature and look at it for a minute. (laughs) I can stack my height, and then we have the tall elf for the rest. Yeah, I can go about lifting. Does it hurt to go talk, or at least try and seek an audience no, with the bear? No, not at all. I don't mind. I'm just um, telling good you. Luck with that. You're going to have to do talking because I'm a duck man. As you discuss your future plans, the sun is about noon in the sky, maybe eleven o'clock. You've been traveling for a while. Why don't you shake your head like that? <laughs> it's, a, it's about noon. Okay. It's a bit earlier. I'm not sure where the sun came from, but okay. Oh, you're right. I'm <laughs> an idiot. It's like we had this discussion. I have I have described this on other sessions. You know what? There's a sun. That's fine. <laughs> Perfect. World that building that as we go. This is what sandbox is made for. You're right. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm not just an idiot. I make mistakes. More to the point, you can see the first strands of refugees making their way south outside of town on the outskirts through the grass. That's not going to go well for them. This is most unfortunate. We missed our opportunity. We still might be able to supply them if they have anything, though they've probably already traded it away. They are half running, some of them, mm. carrying bags that are being packed as they move. Anyone want to play carrying? And just pick through the, what's left after the mercenaries. Of course. Push them <laughs> I might, good with me. I might also make a suggestion on our way back. We probably should talk to them and see maybe if we could make arrangements where we could sell any pelts they get from hunting or things like that, where we could be the go-between. Probably not a lot of money, but maybe small amounts, seeing as they almost certainly will not be allowed in cities. Uh, yeah, probably not. 
You could pro- get a shady spot on the hill and watch this push off and then go around and try and pick through it, assuming those mercenaries don't do that job for us. And hey, if they manage to steal things, we could sell that too. <laughs> Keep a fence. So, could you explain to me why these humans can't go in the human city? Because they're from a different place, and the city is already at the max capacity when it comes to food. It's springtime, not a lot of food is ready, winter was tough. They just can't can't hold them. And so you protect your own instead of the random people. A pair of guards you can make out in the, in the distance near the center of town, down the, the main street that they're sort of standing on, discussing, have uh, marched out from the east, from where the refugee camp is, or at least when you saw it from a distance and are going through uh, a nearby building and leave it with some rope and begin heading back off towards the east. Oh, fun. And we can watch the local execution. Let's go find a shady spot and watch this play out. Uh, at that point, I'm going to move the cart back towards the refugees' end of town. But couldn't these uh, strangers uh, help out with their own skills? Why must they be chased away? Because there's no food. It's easier to deal with them by just chasing them out. And my whole point was, yes, they do have important skills that we can use when they're out of the city. Talk to them, figure out what we can benefit from them, maybe hire some of them if they're useful. But we don't have money, so not that yet. And we'd still need to feed them, which seems to be a problem. Well, I can find stuff if they're comfortable eating grass, maybe a rabbit or two. Not sure how well that'll work out. Well, if they're hungry, I mean, grass is there. Grass they probably is have there. been eating that. Yes, but they don't know what grass is the proper grass, and I know what the proper grass is. I'm just going to look at the donkey who's probably eating some grass off the side of the road right now. But yes, I agree. Let's head off to go see what's going on with the road. So you guys are going, you just like pull your chair closer a little bit. Maybe a little bit closer. Oh, sort of like equal distance. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Just slightly turn this PC. Towards the refugee camp. Ooh. You can describe the scene through town if anything changes. Uh, certainly. There is not very much going on in town right now. There is a crowd sort of... The, the site that you meet when you reach the refugee camp is actually quite interesting. There's sort of a crowd of, you presume, locals, then a thin line of guards who are sort of clumping together near the middle, where they are sort of carting around four bound men who are ashen-faced. Beyond that line of armored soldiers, most of them just wearing ratty and dirty sort of arming coats or, or gambazon, uh, the, although a few are armed with male shirts. One is wearing scale armor, another wearing a hobgoblin sort of iron heart plate over his chest, are milling about. Some are barking orders at people within the camp. Those who are still in the camp are moving much slower than those who are rushing south, taking the time to bundle up their belongings, attach them to what animals they have. You see maybe two or three donkeys for the whole camp, which numbers 90 people. Most of the refugees, as, as you presume them to be, are women or children. There aren't that many men. It seems like almost half of them have been gathered together by the guards. Is there any obvious separation between who's being gathered and who's being shooed off? Those four are the only ones who are being directly sort of pushed around and yelled at by the guards. Their arms are, like, bound by manacles or just rope. You do want to stay here? I uh, have a feeling that introducing less desirable people into this situation is probably going to be frowned upon. Of course! I'm going to get a little closer and see if I can listen to nonsense. Certainly. Moving towards the four getting jobs. There, those four and the guards doing them are being bossed about by a sort of... A... Tall, thin man dressed in clothing that certainly makes him seem thicker, uh, sort of hanging silks uh, and fine jewelry, most of it seeming exotic. He has a a terrible grin on his face, and his eyes sort of shine in the the light of day as he orders his men around uh, to sort of bind and carry off these thieves. By the time you reach him, he's ordering the first one to be staked to the ground. All right. Um, find any local or part of this group who's watching and try and figure out what's going on. Just simply, you know, what do you do? Why is this, uh, what's the official title of this guy who's in charge here? He's a... If that is the lord, they would be the hater. Or if they are a sort of local sort of police person, they would be the reeve, probably, or possibly the bailiff to collect taxes. Mm, no. 
What's the reader on, on with these ones? They tell you uh, that it seems like there was a fight when they were telling the refugees to move camp, and that these four were the ringleaders, and they're, they're being executed for trying to fight against the Soane's Law. There doesn't seem to be much sympathy for them. Uh, Mang overhears you talking to this woman who you were speaking to, and complains that they're all a bunch of poachers and thieves. Uh, um, how long have they been here? This refugee camp seems rather large. The man sort of has thrust himself into the conversation at this point, and almost gleefully explains that they've been here forever, it feels like. They came near the start of winter, and they've been gliding themselves off of their things since. There are definitely some curses for all these four men, as they are all have ropes tied to their wrists and ankles and are stretched out across the hard turf. Yeah, I'm just going to walk away from that, unfortunately. Yeah, so far none of those four men have broken yet. They've all remained quiet, which is nice, I guess. Mm-hmm. Testament to their resolve. Mm-hmm. Make my way back to the party itself. Uh, apparently, when you try and kick a bunch of refugees out, they don't want to go. And apparently a couple of them got violent. So those four are going to die for that. The local Rito seems to be down there directing things, at least a a man fitting what I would call the description of what I believe the Ritter to be. I didn't introduce myself. He looks overly gleeful for the situation, so uh, let's try and keep any problems that we might cause in this town to a minimum. Mm. Yes, I get that. When I was going from the small towns to small towns coming here, people are not friendly, and uh, many of them take pleasure in hurting the less fortunate. Luckily, I can swim. Looks like they're going to be a while packing up. Uh, if we set up tents just outside of town and came in the early morning to investigate the, their camp, we may have uh, first plunder on some of their goods. Do you have a tent? I do not, but oh. metaphorically. <laughs> ah, we sleep under the cart. That's right. Yeah. Tent. Wooden <laughs> tent. Sure. Some of us sleep under the cart. The elf can sleep on top of it. Maybe we can go talk to some of the local business, or maybe Klaus can go talk to some of the local business, see if anybody is in need of anything that we could buy and bring to them. Yeah, wouldn't be worth, um, wouldn't be a bad thing to try. So let's find a, a patch somewhere around here where we can hunker down, but don't look like a refugee. Never mind, let's not do that. <laughs> hey, I'm not so bad. I have a card. Refugees don't have cards. Look that guy over there with but the, only one of them. Definitely one card. <laughs> you said there were like There's two cards. Two or three. Two yeah. for 90 or three people with one card. That's like. Yeah, cool. And that guy with the card down there is getting beat up. Mm-hmm. But we have goods too. All the baubles. <laughs> yes, you have some baubles. We have twelve pounds of baubles. It's a lot of baubles. <laughs> it's a ton of baubles. <laughs> so uh, we can throw them in like one people. sack. <laughs> Half Should a sack. Two maybe. pouches. Should we try and sell the baubles, or is that a bad idea in town? I mean, the man you try and sell them to is currently gleefully staking people in the ground. I kind of get the feeling that maybe these are not the bubbles he would be interested in. This is more for farmers who have some wooden supplies for us and things like that. The refugees that are currently getting staked to the ground would probably... Oh, yes. Maybe they buy them for the kids to make them feel better about their horrible situation. You definitely hear the faint cries of men begging for their wives now, uh, which are one after another silenced. Well, this is doing it quickly. Sort of. You didn't say that. <laughs> oh, they're just silence. Oh, God. I mean, you can't see what's going on. Not from here. Um, let's keep moving through. But yes, let's go uh, set up camp and uh, we'll wait a little bit of distance away from the UG camp. Don't want to get mixed up with them. I don't think we should set up camp until they're done shopping everyone. That is also a good plan. We'll just move through town like we're pretending we know what we're doing. Sure. So moving through town, you pass through the central court, which has a street leading towards the, the gatehouse of the manor, fortified manor, its lone wooden tower. You also pass by the round church and see a woman praying in there by herself. Otherwise, the streets are quiet. Is the church tolerant of deaf men? Like, is there innate racism there? Or yes. Or? Yeah. There is? So the church is was created by Cohn as a means of uniting humans against the undead threat. Okay. So, essentially... The church encourages people to be kind and charitable 
in an almost Christian way to humans, but non-humans that does not apply to, which is why you can enslave duck people and elves and other races. Technically, it only encourages you to be to, to sort of be sinless or virtuous with other people of the faith. So, like, they wouldn't necessarily be opposed to me entering the church. I just would be treated differently, as I'm at normal day. Like, but they wouldn't throw me out of the church if I went into it necessarily. I think it depends on where you go, but I think it's a safe assumption that you might be allowed in. Okay, good to know. <sighs> they don't view, view you as inherently unclean. So, besides this woman praying in the church, I forget what the other landmark you mentioned was. Oh, uh, the manor. The wooden manor with its tower overlooking mm-hmm. the river. I don't think he's here. Uh, he's in right now. So. Don't have a lot of reason to stop there. Uh, church might be a good way to get out of the sun for a little bit if we're just trying to kill some time. Mm, could do that. We could also go down to the little river, try some fishing. Yeah, be a good one afterwards, too. Did any of you know how to fish? I do. I jump in the water and go get fish. <laughs> <laughs> At least oh. you don't leave teeth marks on them. We can sell them just fine. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, presumably, I could eat things in the river, like go down and get stuff. You could you could go hand fishing in the river, just like and fishing. like anything else. Is it easier for you too because of your swim speed and your ability to hold your breath? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe well, not now though. Yeah, church could plan. Sure. So I need to stay with a human too. Probably both of us need to stay with a human. Uh, let's get to the church. Park the cart up alongside it, tie off the donkey, do anything and anything, everything. Right. And <laughs> Damn thieves. You never know when you'll, there's an elf lurking around the corner. Well, I do, actually. He's right there. Um, but more importantly, there's a bunch of refugees in town. Mm-hmm. Or getting kicked out of town. Well, luckily they're being watched pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. By the sounds of it, because everyone assumes they're stealing things. Yeah, that's fair. And then make our way into the church. Are all three of you going in? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go in. I'm, right. I'm definitely curious about uh, the spirit energy here. Right. So the building is thin. Its walls are thin and lofty. There are a lot of long, thin windows and thin arches. There are a lot of, sort of stained glass windows. It's very richly decorated in here. The sunlight, because there's a sun now, I guess... <laughs> You screwed it up, man. No. Uh, I think it's fine. Actually, it's fine. Uh, anyway, is shining through that, casting sort of colored prismatic shadows or light spots, god rays across the sort of circular rings of benches that surround the central podium. To the side of one of the halls uh, kneels a woman who's about 43 or so, who certainly looks like she eats well and is dressed well enough, who is silently praying, and she does not look up when you enter. I don't really have a plan here. I'm just grabbing a back bench and taking a load off for a little bit. We've been on the road for a bit. I am also pretending to pray. Okay. It's important that I say pretend, in case there are gods in the setting that would give me benefits. I'm definitely not actually praying at their gods. Right. I'm just pretending. So well, how does that look? I'm copying what the lady's doing. All right. So she's putting her hands together in front of her face in sort of the bowed head symbol of vassalage. Yeah. Towards Colin and the Fire God, which is the sun now, I guess. That's fine. The church is definitely topped with a faux gold sort of star or sun image, yeah. like as the as a fire. And there is an eternal fire burning away on that sort of podium where the, the preacher would stand. Were he here? Probably at the execution. Most yeah. likely. The entire town seems to be down there. That makes sense. Kept to bless the bodies. It is strange that this lady is here. Not at the execution. And she's well off. Mm-hmm. Maybe related to the quick car. Uh, yeah. yeah. Although I'm assuming there's at least a couple of other well off people. Maybe she wants to buy baubles. She's probably our target audience. Semi rich. You guys are going to talk about audiences. I'm encouraging you to do it in character. <laughs> I'm definitely not talking. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So, you three, are you are you anything, Janowiska? Yes, so I'd like to uh, find a, a seat near the back. And I'd like okay. to. Uh, Take a look around for anything magical using my uh, detect magic uh, spell. All right. <laughs> so there is magic in here. That's good. The eternal flame is magic. Yes, definitely keeping a close eye on that. Yeah, I believe it's evocation would be like elemental. Sounds evocation. Kind of. So there's a faint evocation there. Presumably that's how it is in eternal fire. The woman is very faintly magical. Very faintly. Hmm. And your wizard companion is magical as well. Well, uh, 
I would hope he is magical. Mm -hmm. And once I reach level two, I will also be magical. (laughs) I just have to eat more grubs. Yeah. Or actually get paid for something. Yeah. Well, yeah, you need to make a bunch of money first. Yeah. I think that's going to happen. Oh, well, I got great plans. You guys are all going to die. We're going to start becoming robbing people. And you guys are all going to die in a ditch. <laughs> robbing people. Or shadowing. <laughs> Some foreshadowing. That's a prophecy. What, would we die while robbing people? Yeah, probably. In a ditch, very specifically. <laughs> so I'd, after a little while sitting there, I'd move up uh, next to uh, Klaus mm-hmm. and uh, whisper in his ear, uh, the woman, uh, she has a strong spirit energy around her. What the heck does that mean? You were whispering, right, Janaliska? <laughs> yes. Were you whispering? No. I don't think you were. I turn around. Shh. Don't shush me, you duck. She still hasn't looked back in case you don't even have your hands in the right position. It's right on top of the left. Mm-hmm. I quickly change. <laughs> I do like that the change still had the left on top. <laughs> change. Okay. <laughs> Nobody would have known if you didn't point it out, Morgan. Well, I had to point it out. Yeah. <laughs> It's my duty. <laughs> so unless any of you had uh, three have any other antics you want to engage in, I can just do a time wipe here. I'd love to do that. Yep. It was talking to me. That's true. Do you want to say more, Dan? Well, I don't know what it means. It means her spirit is strong. You're the, the one who engages more closely with this kind of stuff. I don't talk to spirits. What? I thought that was your stick. No, the, the energy that is in all life but glows much more powerfully in this... Uh, oh, you mean she's a mage? Okay. <laughs> you could have just said that. It's okay. very complicated otherwise. She's fidgeting <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yes, I have been whispering this whole time. Yeah. I have not. <laughs> well, whatever. She doesn't... Um, I mean, I do the ones over to see if she's wearing her... Symbol. She looks like she's, she's uh, turned away from you. Yeah, and I'm not gonna get. You up. can't see any on the back of her dress. Although when you look closely, she is sort of shaking faintly. Oh, I don't really mind that she's here. Mm-hmm. She seems to be having a good prayer. Feet go the other way, duck. The other way. <laughs> I don't know what that means, man. So much opportunity for blackmail here, but you guys are just passing right on over. No, she might be a credited wizard. She's supposed to be one. I don't remember. Uh, I think Ian's character made a very good point when he said, "In all things, it is wise to remember that there are many kinds of magic in the world, even if the authorities claim there isn't." Just grab a seat. I'll do what you will with this information. I'll be outside. Okay, it's sunny out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's sunny. Sunny-ish, it's sort of an overcast, I mean, it's spring day. We're just relaxing. You can see a fair-skinned individual. I'll go take a, a seat by the, uh, by the cart and hope to sit in some shade. But no one's stolen the cart since you guys were in the, the church. That's Good. Nice. nice. Slowly life returns to the town. A crowd gathers around you, um, mostly children at first asking what you're up to, who are quickly dragged away, and the questions are begin to be asked by adults in a, a much less wide-eyed and wondrous way and in a much more suspicious and fearful way. Uh, we are merchants, uh, just taking some uh, rest at the moment. Health merchants? Uh, no, we are uh, we are led by, uh, by a human, a wizard, inside. Some magic stuff? Nope. <laughs> Not today. They definitely look in your cart to see what you're carrying. I'm sure they're uh, well disappointed. Yeah, they are. Uh, actually, they look more elite. And they encourage you to move on <laughs> as well. Does the lady pray for the next three hours or whatever? Uh, she will probably rise after maybe 40 minutes. The priest will come back into the church at around that time and greet her. Call her. Uh, he will call her Abigail and she will rise and greet him. Um, and he will whisper some words of comfort to her, presumably, and she'll leave, nodding at you if you're still in the place. Oh, yeah. And then definitely looking to see if she's some, uh, what is it, sanctioned? She does not have your ring on her hands or so many of her clothing either. Does she avoid looking at Klaus the whole time, or is there like a, what's the demeanor, just... Once you guys quiet down, she just continues to... As she's down. leaving, though, does she like... She'll, she'll glance towards you, certainly, okay. the two of you, with her stern face. 
Okay. Trying to remember. Mm. That um, means anything. Interesting. Yeah, no. Just acknowledge the fact that she looks at us and probably have to track her down later. Alright, are you guys doing anything in this town? Uh, yeah, we'll head to the river next. I okay. mean, we're just, we are kind of just bumming around at this point. But so you leave and call if you are. Definitely bumming around. Yeah, and I'm desperately trying to keep things moving. So you leave the tavern and you meet up with Janaluska, who's just outside in the cart, chatting with some farmers about the magic stuff you're selling. And how you're not selling any magic stuff specifically? You're definitely not selling magic stuff. There's but we are man now selling fine bubbles at a very good price. Do you have anything to trade? No. Okay. You don't seem interested. No. How'd the uh, refugee clearing out go? Any other incidents apart from the four? It's quite a show. With one of the farmers you're talking to? Yeah. I'm not talking to him. He just sat on the car the whole time. I didn't. I, just, I don't know if you're asking him. Yeah. Or a lot of people are, a lot of the sort of militia people have, since you've seen them, have like, gone through the town and come back out in everyday day wear, out of their uh, sort of formal Money. ratty armor. Yeah, formal wear. Yeah. <laughs> formal attire. <laughs> <they're>, uh, <laughs> formal attire. Of full All place. the silks are out. <laughs> no, they're they're dressed in sort of tunics. That's hose, tunics. And little vests or uh, jerkins, jacks. Very similar. They are. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, Alright, so, no, they found it entertaining. The shops might open up again after this in a little bit, but let's head down to the refugee camp and pick around now. As you start tying Essel to the cart, a younger man comes up to you, maybe 20, blonde haired, short haired, and asks what sort of bobbles you're selling. He seems interested. We got quite the selection. What you looking for? Oh, just, just something nice. Dig around in the bag for a little bit and pour out a couple of things. Oh, they're all so nice. These must be so expensive. <laughs> Duck has got the crazy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, deal. Oh, I can make money. <laughs> I thought I was just going to be selling snakeskins this whole time. <laughs> he's, he's looking at the different sort of necklaces and rings and other. Looking to buy a gift, kid? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I was. Uh, how much is, is this? And he holds up a, a necklace with some sort of fake red glass rubies on it. <laughs> uh, I have to let you do the talking. <laughs> Funny part is, I don't remember how much I bought them for. Oh, great. <laughs> so, I do. I mean, collectively, I don't think it was much. Nope, but. it was not. <laughs> it was like one silver piece for that 12 pounds. Or something like that. Just yeah. about, yeah. I mean, I'd sell that to him for a silver, and I'd shine it up for him for another silver. Because as nice as it is now, you haven't seen it when it catches the light properly. I only have two silver pieces. Um, what do you? He starts thumbing through his pouch, and one of the ar- well, other farmers laughs and says, "Hans, boy, it's glass. <laughs> You're being tricked." And he like pushes him, and, and the boy's like, "What? No." <laughs> Here. Kid, give it back for a second. Just write her a poem, boy. It's cheaper. Give it back for a second, kid. Actually, All paper right. is quite expensive. Oh, crap. One quick second while I look something. Which is very valid. Paper is quite expensive. Yeah, both of the... Both of the... Both uh, hands and the older man. You just stare at the duck. Um, scratching their heads. Yeah, so I take that back from them. Just... Uh, and hold it up a little more... Gen- or... Hold it up so that the light catches it better. And uh, I don't know if you're going to make me roll for this, but I'm mm. definitely casting magic and trying not to look like I'm oh, doing great. It. <laughs> this is fun. In the center of town with all the farmers and guards, no longer guard uniforms out. Yeah, they aren't equipped with all their spears yeah. and kite shields and At the very camel least. helms. You are accredited, so I mean, you can kind of do magic. He might still kill you anyways. Yeah. But let's roll. Well, it's just like. Gleaming up the glass and making the metal shine a little better. So what spell are you casting? Prestigitation. Prestigitation, and that has what kind of components to it? Just verbal and somatic. Just so verbal and somatic. All right. Uh, I mean, our duck is currently distracting them, which is nice. They are. And you know what? That works. Sure, you can cast it. Sure. It'll so it just nice. shines a little better and looks a little better. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look as glassy and as mm-hmm. fake as it used to. Mm-hmm. I see. See? It's all about the lighting and the presentation. As I hand it back to him. 
The farmer scratches his sort of five o'clock shadow and leans into the boy to whisper something at him, and then hands him some more some more money and pats him on the back. And you get your two silver pieces. Holy shit! You cheat. So that would be two silver pieces is twenty copper pieces. Twenty would be four for you, four for you. Wait, no, eight for you. <laughs> eight for you. Are you doing them. EXP right now? Mm-hmm. Just do it off the end. Let's just yeah, record just the money, the like two silver pieces, and do it over time, and then because it's going to be a long time before we level up. Yeah. I thought it was per silver. I mean, not yeah. per copper. You're right, it is. Yeah. So, you got two XP there. Yeah. For like a couple hundred maybe. <laughs> it's oh, not like it matters, right? It was just something I wanted to try and do. It succeeded. Yeah. So you are heading towards the river now to go fishing. No, I'm, I'm, I'm mildly towards, awed by what the wizard did. Let's head towards the refugee camp and see if we can't pick anything out of it. All right. And also, we got to get out of town pretty soon because that wears a lot. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> it will. Or so, we got to trip that kid. <laughs> What remains of the camp is a single torn, collapsed tent, a number of sacks that have been emptied, some old clothes, a pair of shoes, that, uh, or a single shoe, I should, should say, that is missing its sole, and a hammer. We take everything. Yep, yeah, all of that is valuable. Okay. Not a single thing there that's What's not. What's the, uh, the tent made of? Yeah, canvas. canvas. Holy shit, we have a tent? It's torn. It's canvas, it's torn, and it's being repaired with what looks like pieces of shirt cloth and linen. It's still valuable. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not. I it's mean, that, that is a soulless shoe. We could go sell that to a noble in that town we came from. Also, four wooden stakes, and only one of them is split. Yeah, don't touch those. <laughs> uh, but you see, many don't towns, touch those. If you want to steal the stakes from the guys who are still dead, it's stake to the ground, and there are four times four, 16 stakes. Oh, okay. I thought that's what we were There are many here. towns no, looking no, that was for the tents. wood right now, but I understand you are... Okay, no, they're just ten stakes. Take them. Oh, it's ten stakes. Oh, perfect. I thought four it was the have... ones from the execution. In case you guys like... are wondering, the four men have been beheaded. Yeah. Yeah. And their head are sort of in a small pile next to them. Well, that's just dumb. We should burn these. I think they will. They just want to have a deterrent... Oh, I mean, character. <laughs> I, I think that they are going to just use this as a deterrent in the meantime in case there's any refugees that come by. And they probably will deal with it when it starts to smell. If only I was a character in this game, I could make it a joke about your accent slipping there. <laughs> oh, well. said different for a minute there. Hmm. Yeah, you see, it's my childhood accent. Are there anyone, is there anyone looking at the corpses right now? Are, like guards walking around, or like no, are we here alone? alone? You're on you're on the outskirts of town, so people in the town can definitely see you from here. But there's no one standing watch over. It. Mm. So if we grab these, we should make a move on uh, quickly. You could definitely take their clothes; they're only slightly bloodstained. No, I don't. Ne- I don't care. They have their the belts with knives and coin purses, which are empty. But yeah, <laughs> you might they might have like three copper pieces between them. <laughs> Like, uh, no, just was, a setting question: Would it be inappropriate to take things from these people? Is that considered stealing, or does would the guards care? Just like as a setting question, it would certainly not be something honorable to do. Yeah. I don't know if it would be illegal necessarily. But would anyone consider a duck to be honorable? Yeah, probably not. I will take no. knives. <laughs> How many knives are there? They're empty pouches. You get a dagger and three knives. Actually, uh, yeah, a dagger and three knives. One of them is a long knife, which would be actually would use a sickle stats. Um, down. We're just adding it to the cart. We're going to sell this in town. We come across refugees. You need knives to protect yourselves. Peeling <laughs> um, and peeling. Mm-hmm. One of them has a spoon on them. I will take the belts too. Okay. And the spoon. Just the thing is that the, the spoon that this guy has on him is silver. <laughs> so a spoon would be equivalent to about. Six silver pieces, I think, right inside. I'm just mm-hmm. thinking in my mind, we could fence it or something. Maybe like four. Okay, perfect. Well, and maybe. taking a closer look at that knife, its handle is antler. Yeah. Well, refugees sometimes run with the good stuff and leave the crap. Mm. Or they stole it. Either way, I'm quite happy I went over there. Yeah. Uh, if we're still here at night, I've got a, something I need to do, but I think I think we should definitely good. leave the town now. Yeah. For sure. Let's move on. Might be a good idea. Maybe camp along the river. Seems like town's maybe not the safest place now. We are crossing the river here, I believe. What time of day is it? It's it's about in the next day. Day. Okay. 
I can't remember. None of the maps. It's only one more town over that we're going. So. Two. Two. You have oh, to go to Fedberg and then north from Fedberg. Okay. But that was Hector's. the roads. Okay. That's the one we're taking. Uh, then we don't cross the river here. Nope. We cross the river in Fedberg. So yeah, I assume we just leave town in. Yep. Head on out. Again, I will be doing all of my uh, going along looking for snakes now, because apparently that's a normal thing. Reeds, bugs, everything. I'd okay. love if you could find something bigger, too. Yeah, it's just... I mean, I know it's illegal, but <laughs> still... Love it. You pull up some edible reeds from the waters nearby yeah. and manage to catch a small river fish. We could spend some time fishing. Yeah. Do you have a fishing rod? Um, no. So you guys are just going to watch me <laughs> wade into the water? Oh, no, no, I'll help. I'll help. I just don't have a fishing rod. Mm, maybe a good investment now that we have a bit of money. Next town, buy a fishing rod. I can find crabs everywhere. I've got a nose for it. Well, if, you want, if we want to spend like an hour fishing on this river, we can do so. We can certainly try. Let's do it. Yeah, we got some sacks to fill up. Um, do you want to like rolls or anything for that? I mean, that'd be nice. And it gives you a chance to ruin traffic down the road. There's going to be people passing you for sure. Okay. Um, Ian, are you going to help out in any way? No, with the fishing. You can't help? Nope. I will assist by guarding the cart. Uh, maybe uh, you look around for herbs, isn't that what you do? Maybe some things you can use to well, make? Good idea. Yes, I can uh, I can search around for some uh, herbs of helpful nature. Yes, that was my nickname. Good old helpful Angus. You're Very just, helpful. You're just doing it by hand? Uh, I might use a sack. Oh, that's even There better. are a bunch of empty sacks here. That that's is the idea, better. yes. And I'll, 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 like, swim down to the bottom of the river. I don't know, like, what kind of things. If there's, like, random stuff, like scavenging. I don't know. i uh, kind of wondering how deep this river is, too. You might find a ferry further along the water. It has someone sitting there, waves at you, and asks if you want a ferry across. Ah, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you're going to How deep is this river? Water and ducks. <laughs> how deep? How deep? What a good question. I should probably have an answer for that. Angus would know. Probably like 14 feet. It's a pretty big river, right? It's wide. It's Yeah, it's pretty wide. It flows into the Hertzfluss, which is a really wide river. But yeah, it, yeah, 12 or 14 feet would probably be about right, I think. Is there lower spots? Yeah. I mean, it's a river that banks yeah. are lower. And there are no, I mean like in, in the middle. In the middle and whatnot. Yeah. Is, uh, I got a little bit of an idea here. You got um, any of that stuff that you've scavenged along the way that fish would eat? Of course. Okay, then let's just make a pool. Um, I will let you do that while I swim. And I'm just like... So I freeze a <laughs> pool of ice along a shallow portion, mm -hmm. which is a s small semicircle. How big is a semicircle? Uh, I can do up to five feet, so five foot diameter semicircle cut directly in half. Or I guess it would be slightly more old girl, but... And I can do it twice. So, um, Throw some food in there. Give it a minute. Let some fish swim in. Then you close off the other end of the semicircle with a sack. Mm. I mean, we could build the same thing out of rocks. It just takes longer. All right, let's do it. It's not. It's already done. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. All right. You get a whole bunch of small river fish. Right. You get nine smelt, whatever that means. <laughs> oh, I love these random charts. <laughs> and some perch as well. Oh, nice. Three perch. We should definitely get a net and continue this. This could be very profitable with the food shortages. If those don't make sense, replace them with something that does. Because I don't know. Mm, I mean, I'm not sure what your river there's things I can write, and there's things that I can't write. <laughs> and species of fish in the river is one of the things I can't write. Yeah. Yeah. My fishing quickly. has been a little off. Salmon's probably too big. They're like specific rivers and stuff. We could have just caught bass and be fine. <laughs> yeah, bass are big fish, though. Yeah. Just, I think every time you go fishing, you catch a D10 bass. <laughs> that would be annoying. D10 big, smallmouth bass. <laughs> so I can tell we got more bass. <laughs> Damn, these guys are real good. Getting bass. So yeah, once we're done fishing, uh, oh, you're doing your herb stuff, right? Yes, I'm taking a look around to see if I can find anything of interest. Okay. 
I've got a herbs chart too. It's got a roll. You don't get a guaranteed success because you use knowledge. So we're basically just a huntsman. Oh, some great wild apples growing along the river. Ooh. Yeah. And they find a beehive as well. If you want to have fun with that. And there's some basil growing along the river too. Um, uh, so enraging the bees might be a little out of my uh, depth. Yeah. Uh, but I will uh, grab the apples and the basil. Yeah, there's some, some like wild crab apples. They're pretty you small and rough. Tell us about the bees. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, if you come to shore. Mm. You want to okay. say that to them? How you do that? You, you return to the camp. The duck man's like up to his gut in the water. Bag. All of your fish. clothing is off, I presume. Yeah, uh, I actually look quite happy too. At first, you think it's just a duck? Do, do we want to keep those fish? I'm a really big duck. It's a man sized duck. It's hard to tell from the scale. <laughs> do we want to keep those fish fresh? Or do we want to dry them out on the road? Uh, I'm assuming we are going to try and sell them the next time we come into, unless you want to eat any. Yeah, we will, but do we want to dry them out? Like, we can just throw them in the back, or we can keep them in water. Uh, let's keep them in water. Okay. We should be in the next town fast enough, and then if we need to dry them out, we can. Uh, hold that bag out, like, away from you, and freeze it all. <laughs> Great. You get a big frozen sack, and that's the slide you come in on. The duck man is holding a frozen sack. It hurts you. It's cold on your hands. Yeah. It's pretty careful. Rough. Put yeah. it in the... Just throw it in the back of the cart. Put the right canvas over, over it. it. Yeah. Well, he's got a sack of canvas, yeah. You can wrap another one. Or, or another well, just uh, to keep this off. I'll say yawns briefly. There's a beehive uh, over yonder that way. Did you get any of the honey? Uh, not yet. Uh, there does seem to be some bees around there. Uh, yes. Okay, let's deal with that. 